Hi, everyone. Welcome to our online service. As always, we're so glad that you can join in with us to worship the Lord and to be transformed by the power of his word. As we sing, may the joy and peace of the Lord be with you. And let's get right in. That's saying, let everything. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all I have, I will sing. Let everything. from your heart Count into mercy so deep I could never depart Father your wonders are endless Open my eyes to believe Awake my soul And say let everything Let everything shines like the sun heaven's on fire alive with the brilliance of love and father your wonders are endless open my eyes to receive awake my soul awake let everything that has breath praise the lord Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all. Sing that everything that 
just one word You calm the storm that surrounds me Just one word The darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven And just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's something that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can move Oh praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do Just one word You hear what's broken inside me Just one word And you revive every dream Just one touch I feel the power of heaven And just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a prison wall He can't break through the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's nothing that you can't do Let's sing, I will believe. Let's sing to him, I will. I will believe from greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe from greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all in thee. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. There's nothing that a God can. Away. There's nothing that our God can't do More time There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's nothing that our God can't do
Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from heaven to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, forever oh jesus christ my living hope and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation
Hope you enjoyed that time of worship. The Lord is good, and it's always great to declare and sing that together. Next, Pastor Fiona is going to continue with the next message in our series, Preparation for Growth. It's going to be a good one, so let's listen in and be ready for whatever the Lord has to speak to us today. Here's Pastor Fiona. Good morning, our church. How are you? I'm so excited that uh, we get together again online, and I know that uh, we're still waiting together in person but in the meantime, I so look forward to us gathering online again. Thank you for being faithful in popping online every single week. Uh, we've been at it for a while now, and I am just incredibly grateful that the Lord will allow us to have such a platform to be able to share the word and to gather as a church online as well. And so let's go right into the word. We'll continue with the series, Prepare Preparation for Growth. And today I am wearing our Olympic uh, Canada uh, gear in just remembering for our athletes who are in Tokyo for the Olympics. I'm sure everybody has their opinions to why we're having the games in the middle of the pandemic still or because Tokyo is having a stay at home orders. Whatever it is, I pray that when you see this that and you have continued to practice being a disciple of Christ, which is never mind about people's opinions or our own opinions, but that we would be obedient to the to the word of the Lord and at the same time that we will be about each other which is to pray for our nation and in particular because our athletes are overseas right now and by all means for all athletes but I want to represent today because I'm just so proud of our team and for going uh for going to Tokyo and for still being part of the games despite of which actually goes into right into what we're going to talk about today and so in Galatians chapter 5 we'll be talking about the fruit of the spirit in preparation for growth which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, uh, and self-control. I think I'm missing one faithfulness. And so today we're going to talk about joy altogether. Now, we can go in so many different ways about joy, and in particular, uh, how Galatians was written anyway. Uh, Paul was actually writing this book uh, to actually teach the people to set the record straight that he is... Um, that when he brought the gospel in, and it wasn't about people... Uh, the ones that were not Jewish uh, to follow the Jewish laws, but that actually uh, it's already been said by Jesus that the gospel is for all nations, for everyone, and that it is actually under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so because we're talking about preparation for growth and how fitting it is that the games are happening in Tokyo and our team is there and I love wearing our Canadian gears to represent and it just feels like you're part of it. I don't know about you, but I do. Uh, and so uh, I, I do want to encourage us to bring your Bibles out as we go along the journey talking about joy today. And the whole premise that we're talking about about joy is actually having joy in the midst of trials, having joy in the middle of a pandemic, having joy where there are still restrictions, having joy when some of us might not be fancy about wearing a mask, having joy about uh, you know following protocols. And so we're going to go right into the scriptures. I want you to go into Proverbs 10, 28, Proverbs 10, 28. Proverbs 10, 20, it says, The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hope of the wicked comes to nothing. The prospect of the righteous. Now, a lot of us would be like, yeah, I'm righteous. Or a lot of us would say no. Uh, but it is not by the merit of what we do, or even by the way that we would say how we are. But then it's actually the, the righteousness has to do with being right into the word of God, being the disciple of Christ, but at the same time between us and God, uh, where no one is looking between us and God. And so the prosper of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked comes to nothing. You notice the scriptures didn't say the prospect of the righteous is money or fame or house or car or materials, all that stuff. You know, the, it says joy. And I can't help but to notice that sometimes joy has been robbed from us. Uh, some of us are running out of joy. Some of us are lack having just 
lack of joy uh, because of life circumstances that's been happening. It's been a hard two years for every one of us, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of where you've been. But the last year has been really hard for every single person uh, on the face of this earth, on planet earth, because the pandemic has happened and there's so much pivoting happening. And yet it says here that the prosper, the righteous is joy. And so I want to press into that part it says the hopes of the wicked comes to nothing so we don't want to put our hope into all these uh things even though we want to be alert to it uh we want to know what is happening we want to we do want to know that the news is out there but at the same time we want to put a hope and anchoring in the lord because the righteous the righteous the prosper of the righteous is joy and so how do you get your joy is by leaning in into the lord jesus christ by leaning in into his scriptures is by actually living righteously is by actually not putting our hope into all these other stuff uh, but that we will anchor ourselves into the reviewing and the convictions of the holy spirit at the same time it's like the athletes they are there despite of they are there they didn't put their hope in because there's a lockdown and the pandemic still no they are actually they went forward and to me uh that is such a joyful occasion uh that they just pressed forward and went for it and so what are some of the areas in our lives that we actually need to press forward despite of that we need to press forward even if that we need to actually 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 even be there in action in the midst of a ground zero moment Let's keep going. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, 3 says, Consider it pure joy. Somebody said pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, hallelujah, because you know that the testing of your faith produce perseverance. Somebody said perseverance. You know, again, I can't help but to think about the athletes. They are persevering in being there. They are flexing uh, in being at the games right now because I bet you there are many trials that they've already had to face in being there, the protocols, the do's and don'ts, and a lot of athletes couldn't even be there uh, because of you know restrictions, because of their own personal challenges. But consider it pure joy, the scripture says, my brothers and sisters, that when you face trials, that you will have persevered because you know that the testing of your faith produces persevere. I mean, it's a load of scripture right there. First of all, the Lord says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face face trials of many different trials it says face trials of many different kinds so the lord didn't just say the big kind you know what we say the big kind we all have our own opinions about what big trials are some of us it would be a really big trial if your brother and sister stole your really big apple candy because grandma just dropped by to give it to you that could be a really big trial to still consider it pure joy but what would be it be for you to still consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters when you face trials of many kinds i mean god already knew that we were going to face trials god already knew that it would be a testing in our faith and yet he's encouraging us that first of all before perseverance that you have to consider it pure joy he didn't just say joy he says pure joy so what would pure joy be for you for me pure joy is gathering my kids pure joy is coming together with family time Pure joy is being able to have a really uh, heart to heart uh, with family members. Pure joy could be just taking a joy ride to go out of the city. And so what would be pure joy for you that would make you giggle that that is it's not really anything that uh, that money can buy or or um, or something that that somebody has to do for you in that sense. But what would be pure joy uh, in the and here's the thing, though, is pure joy in the midst of a trial of many kinds. And so, you know, for example, what if somebody key your car, you know? What if somebody key your car, will you still consider pure joy? Because I don't know, I don't think I've ever met anyone that could still laugh it off uh, when someone key, key their car. But I am putting a challenge out there is whatever trials you are facing right now, will you consider pure joy first? And knowing that the testing of your faith will build perseverance in your walk with God in persevering in your faith to rise up to the occasion, knowing that it is the grace that give us that strength. Let's keep going. 
uh, First Te Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. It says, Rejoice always and pray continually, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes, you know, the fruit of the Spirit that is, uh, that is, that we take that we partake that is being given by the holy spirit that that joy uh comes being able to be grateful that we can rejoice because we are grateful we you know somebody actually challenged us actually today uh that we'll be grateful even in the midst of a trial we'll be grateful for the trial and i know that sounds crazy but we'll be grateful for the trial. So Father, we thank you for the trial. I'm grateful that you put me through the trial, knowing that it will persevere my faith, knowing that it will anchor me in you, that I can have pure joy to rejoice because I am praying continuously. You see what I just did there? So that we are not just feeling stuck because a lot of times when we go through trials, we feel like we're stuck. Can you imagine for our athletes that they're in the middle of their race and they went through a trial and they just give up? And those of us who are watching, uh, it's like, no, come on, get up. Like, let you know, you could do it. You know, finish the race, finish well. And, you know, that's part of my my journey as well is that any time when it comes to a transition or any time it comes to a task or projects, whichever it is, I want to finish well. I want to be faithful in what the Lord has given us. And so it's not just about the big things that we see as big or the small things that we see as small because we all kind of judge things a little differently. But what is the things that the Lord has given us that to be good stewards so that we will have great joy in doing it, but also in the midst of trial that we will even rejoice and pray continually knowing that he is testing our faith. Why does God test our faith? Because he actually trusts us. But part of testing our faith is that actually he loves us. He loves us so much that that is part of the connection between us and Papa God. You know, that brings me to a character in the Bible, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was working overtime in doing that. He, they, the people had just returned from exile. I mean, they have been away from God because Jesus hasn't come yet. There has been no sacrificial land. There has been no sacrifice of the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, yet where grace was abundance. And so when God, all God wanted to do was to renew in uh, each other. And you know, there's a scripture that actually says like, you know, go and rejoice instead of mourning, instead of in the sorrow. Isn't it crazy talk though? Because because the Israelites were feeling so guilty and they were feeling so um I mean, God never asked the Israelites to be perfect people and they were not known for that. But God loves his children and he wanted his children to come. And so I want to challenge you is where you're at in your in your journey with the Lord that you need to be able to do that to hear it straight is that you are his beloved and that regardless of whatever happened that he actually wants you to have joy that it's not just in the good times he wants you to have joy it's not just when you're happy to have joy and and in fact happiness and joys are totally different thing I can be happy for one moment and be sad the next but yet if there's a joy in me that I can still have a dance in the middle of a storm and so do you have a dance in the middle of the storm how is that joy happening and that's why in first Thessalonians it can say to give thanks in all circumstance for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus so that you can rejoice always and pray continually it is quite a challenge for everybody who is living on planet earth because it is almost unnatural for us to rejoice in the middle of a trial in the middle of a pain in the middle of a sad moment now i'm not saying to go and make a joke inappropriately and in an awkward way no that's not what i'm talking about but joy is actually inside of us joy remains inside of us it, it's not just this thing that you just you know let it all loose um no it, it's also not kind of like that song where it, says, where it sings about you know because i'm happy uh but, you know clap along and so it's it's not quite that like joy actually lives inside of us that we know and it, for me i almost feel like uh there's definitely you know when we talk about the 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 fruit of the spirit it is actually the holy spirit that gives us that so the spirit of joy that lives inside of us that is from the lord jesus christ is from the holy spirit that god wants us to live and to grow into all of that good stuff 
Now, in Nehemiah, my one of my favorite scripture, Nehemiah eight ten, it says, "The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength." You know, there are days where I said, "The joy of the Lord is my strength." I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. I I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I lift up my eyes to the hill, and where does my help come from? I'm sure you've heard me say these scriptures many many times because these are some of my life verses that I would say so that I would anchor myself in the Lord Jesus Christ, where the Holy Spirit has room to work with me. Because you know I can tell you, those of us who are really type A and we want all the control, it is hard for the Holy Spirit to come through. Even though we're like, God, come through for me. And you try to figure it all out. You try to have control even with your emotions. It is hard for God to come through. Because then you want to have you want to control even your emotions your your emotions sometimes can be just you know here there and nowhere sometimes some of us we can feel really big feelings for some things and sometimes we can feel nothing about some things and that's okay because every one of us are different but the fruit of the spirit in preparation for growth how are we growing that fruit of the spirit how are we growing that joy which is one of the component in the entire fruit of the spirit what's happening in our tree what is it that the lord is pruning of us what is it that he's bringing into our way to say hey i want you to pay attention to that so i want to encourage our church one more time do you still have a dance in the middle of a trial do you still have a dance in the middle of a storm can you still laugh with the joy of the lord in, in some things you know and and i have to say to some of you sometimes it's laughable Sometimes you have to say like, you know what? The enemy is just throwing shade and the enemy is a liar. And you just need to know to say, you know what? Shut up and have a good laugh about it. Uh, have a good nap because that is all part of joy. Did you know that to be able to rest is part of joy? That you're able to have a restful sleep? That you're able to have the shalom peace? You, you, we can't do one or the other. There's no uh, way we can have peace and not have joy. I mean, we could be having peace and still be in agony. Uh, it kind of interrupts that a little bit but like i said joy is not a feeling nor is it a emotions but actually it is the spirit of joy that is inside of us so that we can live it out now romans uh 15 13 romans 15 13 says may the god of hope come on somebody may the god of hope so you need to say a real loud hope because that goes together may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit see what i mean there it's not by our own doing but it's by the power of the holy spirit come on somebody you need to be calling it down you need to be asking for the power of the holy spirit to come upon you so that you has you put your hope and trust in him so that the joy will increase out of you i pray in the name of jesus that there will be a bubblingness of laughter coming out of you as you put your trust in him church it is so vital that we learn to do that in preparation for growth because in days to come as a season arrives has a seat as we approaching to new seasons how as we go through some transitions as we go through new things in life that in every single season that we are in preparation for growth for this uh for, for especially for these i call it foundation so that you will know you will know and you will remember that the joy of the lord is our strength that even in the midst of the trials actually in the trial that we put our trust and our hope in the lord jesus christ to anchor ourselves in him to know that we that by the testing of faith is a person we are gaining these person i call the muscle some spiritual muscles going on here that we will be able to rejoice that we will be able to consider it pure joy and so our church, you know, I want to challenge you in those three things, uh, particularly in these three things is what, what, how, how are you waking up every single morning? What is the manner of that? Because there are things going on, especially those of you who carry a, a full-time job is there are things going on at work that could actually destroy your joy or it, or, or it could steal your joy because things are so stressful, because things are so demanding, because things are just the pressure cooker is there and so how well, how are you waking up in the morning what is the manner do you run towards the lord first or do you run towards your phone to answer in emails or a text or whatever it is that is already pulling you left and right or those of us who are children uh, at home that we need to attend to do you have those quick moments i call it quick because those of us maybe we have five minutes maybe some of us could 
carve out 30 minutes. You know, I want to challenge us if we have a busy day ahead of us, especially when there's a big project happening. I want to challenge our church that we would get up earlier in the morning so that we would spend that quiet moment with him so we have a moment where we listen to his voice in preparation for the day and he can surely do that so that the joy isn't already robbed out of you so that you start your day right so i bless you that you will have the joy of the lord in each, every single morning and throughout the day uh secondly is how do you end your day do you leave all those burdens back to the lord or do you take it with you because it is so important. That's why some of us don't sleep because we are actually bring all this stuff with us. So that is why there is counsel with the Holy Spirit. And so I pray for wisdom and discernment that you'll be just let it go. Like, you know, God, I give you back the burdens of the day that you've given me. Give me wisdom and discernment in some of these decisions that I would need to have. And and just discerning to be fair, to have a discerning spirit, but yet with the joy to work with people that is around you, to influence the people that is in the workplace that the Lord has allowed you. And thirdly, how's your joy doing around family members and around your kids? I could tell you, I can always know how home is doing by just asking your children. And so how is that going? Uh, how's your joy going at home? Uh, because you know, sometimes we hurt the people that we love the most, the fastest. And so what is it that is robbing your joy? Perhaps a conversation needs to happen. Perhaps some boundaries need to be uh, drawn. I don't know what it is, but I want to challenge you that with these scriptures, that as we are preparation for the growth, that the joy of the Lord would be your strength, that you would not let the enemy or anyone or circumstance to rob it out of you, but that you will ride the waves with the Holy Spirit, knowing that he is with you and he is for you and that he is his eyes are on you he has never taken his eyes off you and he knows everything that's happening he's just waiting for you to acknowledge that he is absolutely around and last but not least i want to challenge our church just because situations are bad doesn't mean we don't have to have joy just because trial seems to be like really really bad does not mean that there cannot be joy that can be there can be the joy of the lord inside of our spirit so i bless you church that the, the spirit of joy will be in you and that we will rely on the power of the holy spirit to increase those things inside of us and to be reminded that we are seen and we are heard and that you will be encouraged i pray your spirit will be encouraged today i ask that there will be so much joy in your household and uh, in the spirit of influence that you have and especially uh wherever you are working as well that there will be a spirit joy in the midst of trials and we speak breakthrough over you and your lives and the ones that you get to lead or to work with or to parent or to live with as well so i so thankful for you and i'm thankful that god will put you in the midst of a storm or a trial and you can still have a dance about it some of you you need to have a dance party right after this so i i dare you i challenge you have a dance party storm the enemy on the ground you know there used to be a song actually that says satan's underneath my feet you know, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. I mean, I had that when I was a kid. Uh, there's another song about, you know, about stomping the ground and having a dance party. So do you still have a dance in the midst of a storm? So I challenge you today. I love you so much. I look forward that we get to meet. Uh, stay tuned for announcements. But in the meantime, stay safe. And uh, remember, pray for Team Canada has there at the Olympics and also pray for our nation. I'll see you next week. Blessings. Thank you, Pastor Fiona, for that awesome message. I think that for me, without even realizing it, sometimes I've let those worries and circumstances affect my joy. And so I need to give those things to the Lord. And if you have anything that you'd like prayer for, please feel free to reach out. You can find us on Instagram or by email. We'd love to hear from you and pray with you. And we also have one announcement concerning our online service time. So starting next week, we're going to be starting almost two hours earlier at 11 a.m. So that's 11 a.m. Eastern time. Make sure that you Tune in earlier next week. We're looking forward to seeing you. But that's it for today's service. May the Lord bless you this coming week. May his love, joy, peace, and all the fruit of the Spirit be with you and in you. And remember that you are loved and you belong. Take care.